decades before the telephone, a century before the internet, long distance communication is done by telegraph. Telegraph allows a real integration of communications. Unless there's an ocean in the way. Europe can integrate with Asia because telegraphs can go across land, but they can't go across water. America was cut off. To become a superpower, the United States needs to connect. And one man sees the answer. What if messages from Europe didn't take weeks? A telegraph cable across the ocean floor. It was brilliant or insane. The transatlantic cable is the precursor to the internet that we know today. And he's not the only one trying. The ambition to build a cable from the US to Russia was just insane. The two rivals risk millions. You're sinking your fortune and your reputation into this almost impossible project. Face one disaster after another in hopes of achieving the impossible. Whichever cable works first wins, and whichever cable doesn't take loses everything. Cyrus Field has a secret weapon in the race to connect the continents, the biggest steamship ever built. Great Eastern, which was by orders of magnitude the biggest ship in the world. No ship would be bigger than the Great Eastern, which was launched in 1858, until the Lusitania was launched in 1907. With a single ship big enough to lay the entire line across the sea, Cyrus Field is ready to take on the Atlantic one more time and win. It's the spring of 1865. As Perry Collins and Western Union race to install their telegraph cable, connecting the Pacific coasts of North America and Russia, Cyrus Field launches his third attempt to bridge the Atlantic after losing the modern equivalent of an astronomical quarter billion dollars personally on his first two tries. William Thompson designed the new cable, and it was just much more robust, much better designed, and it had been fully tested underwater over its whole length to make sure that it worked. In tests, Thompson's redesigned cable not only works, it's 80 times faster than the previous line. The cable that William Thompson designed was the standard cable up until fiber optics replaced it in the late 20th century. Out of money, Field secures new investors from Britain and retrofits a massive 19,000-ton passenger ship to lay the new cable. The Great Eastern is the largest ship in the world. Previously, there had been no vessel that was large enough, but finally, they were able to store all of it on just that one ship. In its cargo hold are 18 million pounds of Thompson's new and improved telegraph cable. It's now or never for field. And on July 13, 1866, the Great Eastern departs from Valentia, Ireland. Field is taking no chances with his fragile cable. They're walking with it and making sure it coils out smoothly. A whole gang of men is down in the cable tank, walking the cable around night and day. After 10 days at sea, 1,200 working miles of line have been laid. This entire process is terrifying every single second because it doesn't matter how far you get. If something goes wrong in the last five minutes, it's over. There's no partial completion. This is either 100% perfect or it's a failure. Finally, on July 27, 1866, after two weeks of calm seas and careful cable laying, the Newfoundland coast is in sight. The Great Eastern is too big to make port, so local fishermen help carry the cable to shore. And Field's 12-year odyssey may have finally established a communication link between the United States, Europe, and Asia. All's well. Thank God. The cable is laid but only if the line is carrying a clear signal.
with a working telegraph line in place, clear messages can be sent across the Atlantic in minutes, not hours. America and Europe have been in continuous communication ever since. Now that there is a final, permanent, underwater telegraph cable that works, things change for the United States, right? Now we can talk to our international allies. The men of Wall Street can now cheer because now they're connected to all of those foreign markets. Cyrus Field has been through the ringer. And finally, when this cable's connected, this is vindication. It demonstrates that all of his crazy ideas weren't so crazy after all. He's just thinking so much bigger than the rest of the world. News of field success forces Western Union to pull the plug on Perry Collins's cable dream. When the Atlantic cable is completed, Perry Collins' adventure is over. It's done. In fact, the workers at the end of the line even drape their last post in black. They mourn the loss of their line. And, and with that, it more or less rots. Though unsuccessful with his telegraph line, Perry Collins lives well on the advance money he earns from the partnership. Western Union goes on to lay its own cables across the Atlantic before its telegraph operations are bought out by the American Telephone and Telegraph Company, better known as AT&T. The transatlantic cable is the precursor to the internet that we know today in terms of a way to transmit information and knowledge. The achievement of the transatlantic cable. It was the building block our modern world is built upon. We have satellites above, but even they are tethered to a system, a network that is built on cables. Today, there are over 400 undersea cables crisscrossing the world's oceans, and dozens more are being laid every year. Because despite handheld wireless communication, 99% of all international data traffic is still carried by undersea cables. Thanks to the successes and failures of two men who risked everything to link the US to the world, our planet is forever connected in a web of wires.